Um, if we can welcome John Dearman, I really didn't want anybody to miss this class because this particular class is very important, especially if you are new to the prophetic, because it is about hearing God's voice. So John, just take your time. I'm sure a few people will trickle in. Right. Well, thank you. Well, first of all, I just want to say it's an honor to be before you guys and to be sharing the word with you. And um, so I, I just, not everybody knows me really great in this room. So I just wanted to tell you just a little bit about myself before we get started. Um, so I grew up in the church. I think I got saved by my mom when I was four or five years old. Uh, so church is really any, anything I've ever known. Um, but I grew up in the Presbyterian church, and, um, and I grew up in a church where there is no prophetic, right? So the Presbyterian church believes that um, the only way to hear God's word is by reading the Bible, right? That God doesn't really speak anymore. Um, and, and so I grew up in the church. I, I went on mission trips. Um, I, I went as a, when I graduated college, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, but I've been praying about it a lot. Uh, and so I ended up going as a missionary to Bolivia. So I, was, I served as a missionary in Bolivia for two years, and that's where I met my wife. And that's why she has a little bit of an accent. Um, so we got married there, and then we came back. And I wanted to go back to the mission field. Um, and to do that in the mission agency I was with, you had to get some kind of formal Bible training. And my leaders at the time said, why don't you just go to seminary and get a full education, and then you can come back. Um, and then what surprised me was, so I did that. I went to seminary, and in seminary we had twins, so God has a sense of humor, right? So I'm trying to study and become a pastor, and we have twins, but it, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, and so, um, and then... Uh, I went ahead and became a Presbyterian pastor, and I did that for about six years. And then I, I came to Bernie to, to work at a church in Bernie, so we moved the whole family here. And then things didn't quite work out really great in that church. Uh, I realized pretty quick that where I, because I had already found the Spirit by that point, and I was trying to, you know, stubbornly lead these Presbyterians into the Holy Spirit, and they were resisting. And... <laughs> Um, and they, they just had this, I just realized that our, our goals for ministry and the way we were planning to grow the church was just so different. And, and it was a church plan and they had this limited amount of money for the pastor. And I just knew, you know, sometimes you just know it's not a good fit. It wasn't a good fit. Uh, so I left there and then I bounced around a bunch of jobs and now I am a teacher at Great Hearts. Forest Heights, just down the road here. Um, so, and I, I do chaplaincy kind of on the side, so I'm still a little bit involved in ministry. But what's exciting to me about ministry is that even though I'm not officially kind of employed as a, as a minister anymore, um, I, I just love hearing God's voice, right? I love the way that God speaks to us. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So... Get this out real quick. So yeah, so I'm a, I'm a Presbyterian that became Reformed, and now I'm charismatic, and you know, I, I just, just. Oh, you're right. So and then uh, my wife Holmes was homeschooling with the Charlotte Mason style philosophy, just the same philosophy that Anna uses, and. So she went to a park to find a Charlotte Mason group, and Anna just happened to be at the park. Was not actually part of that group that my wife was looking for, but does Charlotte Mason anyways, and they connected that way. Um, and so then when things didn't work out at my church, you know, we, Anna had invited us to this church, and we came here. And the first time I was here, uh, Pastor Ted had people come to the front and pray for other people. And I was like, this, yeah, this is the church that I belong to. Um, so I'm just really thrilled to be here. Um, so we're going to start with hearing God's voice by talking about that we really have to understand 
how our, our relationship with God works, right? For us to, un, to hear his voice correctly and help other people, we have to have our own relationship right with God. And so growing up in the Presbyterian church, um, I learned a lot of things that were, were not right. Um, and, and I kept reading the Bible and then comparing it to what was happening at the church. And I, I kept thinking, this, this can't be it, right? This can't be all that there is. Uh, and, and in the Presbyterian church, we talk a lot about, um, we do a lot of begging God for things, right? We beg God to help us with this. We beg God to help us with that. And we do a lot of sin management. We talk a lot about sins and we're begging God to forgive us for our sins, you know, all the time. Um, but I, I have now come into a f- kind of a fuller understanding of grace, right? And that Jesus died for our sins once and for all, and he doesn't have to die again, right? And, and so, so we're, we're, we're free from that performance mentality. So I kind of grew up with this church performance mentality that you have to, uh, we, I, the way I saw my relationship with God was that I was this kind of little person, right? And God was this huge person that was far away and that he was looking down. And then every time I messed up, he would be like, oh man, there he goes again, right? Okay. But that is so not how our relationship with God really is, right? So our relationship with God is more based on what God has done, right? He's been a merciful, loving father since the very beginning, all right? And so you can, we can go back. I want to go back to the story of Adam and Eve in the garden because if we don't understand this, then we're going to read our Bible wrong the whole time, okay? So... In the garden, right, God is there with Adam and Eve, and he's talking with them, right? There's direct relationship, right? God's not the super far away person, like, micromanaging their life, right? God is with them with loving relationship, okay? And they can hear God's audible voice, right? He, he walks with them and he talks with them, okay? And then they go and they choose to believe this other being, the serpent, over what God has said, okay? But God does not abandon them. God does not stop speaking to them. The relationship is still there, right? God, God does not leave them alone. God still continues the relationship. He comes and is like, Adam, and where are you guys, right? And so there's this, there's this understanding that we have to have that sin does not disqualify us from hearing the voice of God, right? If we, if we are in Christ, we are the new creation, we can hear God's voice because God wants that relationship with us and he's speaking to us. And he's speaking all the time. And if we're not hearing God, it's not God's fault, right? If, if we're not hearing from God, it's because we're not dialed in. We're not tuned in enough. Maybe we've got distractions in our life. We've got things that are slowing us down, things that are weighing us down. All right, because when Adam and Eve sinned, God still comes and speaks to them, right? And he makes clothes for them, okay? But he does kick them out of the garden, all right? But that was not a punishment, actually. That was protection for them, okay? God was protecting Adam and Eve because once you eat the fruit of that tree, the knowledge of good and evil, you, you are corrupted, right? And it was actually merciful for God to kick them out of the garden because he did not want them to be corrupted with the sin and then eat from the tree of life and live forever in corruption, right? God doesn't want that for any of his children. Okay, so he he moves them out of the garden, but he continues to speak to them, all right? So that, so, and we, we have to understand that, right? That sin does not qualify, disqualify us from hearing God's voice, okay? We're all qualified because we're in Christ. We're a new creation. We can hear God's voice. Okay, and the other thing that I want to say about sin real quick is that we don't want to prophesy about other people's sins, right? Everybody knows what they're doing wrong. We don't need to tell them what they're doing wrong, okay? Can we all agree on that? Okay, so 1 Corinthians 13 and 14 talk a lot about prophecy, okay? Prophecy is to, to build up, to encourage, to comfort, and to edify, right? And so God might actually reveal somebody's sins to you, right? 
but that's not what we're gonna prophesy. So if, so if God reveals to you that some person is an adulterer or you know, tied up in pornography, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna prophesy, you know, I just see, God sees you as so clean and so holy. And he's gonna start teaching you about how clean and really holy you are, right? And we're just gonna prophesy in the opposite spirit, right? Does that make sense? Because we know, we don't have to guess, we know that that's what God, God's will is for that person, right? God's will for people that are addicted is for them to be clean and free, right? We can all agree on that, amen? Okay, so, and we want them to find, so this freedom that I found from the performance mentality, oh my gosh, it's like having a whole weight just lifted off you, right? I, I don't have that performance mentality anymore. I've put that to death, all right? I, I am a child of God, and, and I don't have to worry about other things because my life is based on Jesus' performance, and he, he knocked it out of the park, right? So when I make a mistake and I, I sin, I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm not begging God for forgiveness anymore, right? I'm not, I'm not asking for his mercy all the time, right? Because I know I have it. So I, when I sin, I say, Jesus, I'm sorry. That's not who I am. That's not who I am. I am the righteousness of Christ, and I need your help to do better the next time, right? And that's what we're learning, right? We're learning to be in this relationship with Christ and God, right? And he's empowering us to leave the sin behind. So we're not worried about sin anymore. We're chasing after Christ and we're focusing on him, right? And what he can talk to us. Okay. Um, so, so that's kind of what I wanted to, to really hit on, right? Is that God desires this relationship with every person, right? The same relationship that he had with uh, Adam and Eve. And then, <clears throat> and then the other thing we have to do about our Bible is we cannot, I did this for a long time, so I don't want you to do this. So we, I would read the Bible, and I would look at people like Moses and Elijah and the prophets and, you know, Peter, and I'd be like, wow, those guys are amazing. Like, I'm never going to get there, all right? And so the Bible was kind of like the exceptions that we're never going to live up to. Okay, you cannot read your Bible that way, right? The way we need to read the Bible is this is what's possible, right? If they can do it, I can do it better, right? Jesus said that we're supposed to do greater things than he did, right? That's his own words, right? And so, so we need to look at the Bible as this is what's possible, right? This is just the beginning of what's possible, and God wants us to know even more, and he wants to prophesy even more, and he wants to speak even greater things of these people, right? He wants to raise them up, okay? And so when we see Moses, right? Moses is, was, was special, right? And I always thought, I mean, I would love to be like Moses because he got to sit in the tent, right? When the glory of God came in the tent, and he would go sit in the tent and talk to God. And it, and it has this cool phrase in the Bible, right? That he got to talk to God face to face, like man to man, right? but that was God's plan for the entire people, right? And they're the ones that rejected that, right? And, and if you have any questions about that, I really encourage you to get Anna's teachings about the covenants because it'll totally clear all that up for you. But the, the people of God, so God wanted to talk to everybody the way he talked to Moses in the tent, right? And so that's the way you need to think as you're prophesying, right? That you're, you're like, you're in the tent with the glory of God talking to, to Jesus face to face, right? That, and so it shouldn't be hard to hear, right? Because he's speaking, he wants to speak to you like that, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay. And so, so now what we're trying to do is, so we agree that God's trying to speak to us, right? And that he wants to have this close relationship with us. And so we're going to try to read our Bible in that way, right? And so when you read the Bible in that way, it just totally opens up so many possibilities. Okay. Um, all right, so, in the, so God was merciful to Adam, right? He was also merciful to Cain, right? So you have the person, right, that probably commits the very first murder ever recorded. God continues to speak to him, 
right? The relationship is still there and God protects him as well, right? Cain is worried that people are gonna murder him and God puts a protection on him and says, no, there's, I'm gonna put a mark on you so that nobody hurts you, okay? So, <clears throat> um, so the relationship continues. God doesn't abandon us. The Bible tells us what is normal. Okay, so, so we need to learn how, to, so God is always speaking and what we really need to learn is how to tune in. Okay, so in 1 Samuel, right, there is the audible voice of God, right? So little Samuel hears this voice, right? And he thinks it's the priest <laughs> and he keeps running in and waking up the priest. He's like, yeah, you called me, I'm here. And he's like, no, I didn't call you. <laughs> Go back to bed. What are you doing? It's the middle of the night. All right, but so even if we sometimes hear the audible voice of God, right, that doesn't mean you're necessarily gonna understand what it was, right? So it took four times, I think, for Samuel to realize that Eli had to tell him, that's God speaking out loud to you. God wants to talk to you, okay? And I'm here to declare tonight that God wants to talk to each and every one of you and he wants to give you words for you, and he wants to give you words for these other people that we're gonna be prophesying for, all right? And it's gonna be encouraging, it's gonna be awesome. Okay, and so as, as we grow in listening to this, right, what's great about this prophetic training is you get time to practice, right? Because we need to kind of grow in our confidence of, did I hear God? I think this was God, right? And this is a good place to grow in that kind of confidence, okay? And like I was saying, right, it doesn't depend on how spiritual you are, right? You don't have to be a leader. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be this great and mighty person. No, no, no. God speaks to everybody all the same, right? All we have to do is kind of dial in and learn how to hear. And then sometimes we just have to take a step of faith, right? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some examples here in a minute of things that have come to me. And, you know, some of them were kind of weird, all right? So I had to take a step of faith and say it, okay? Um, so sometimes there's just obedience in hearing and saying, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a try and be faithful and speak it, okay? And the great thing about prophecy, right, is that it's like anything else. It's like a sport, right? You can train in it. You can get better at it. You can learn it. It can be taught. It can be learned, and it can be practiced so we can get better at it, right? It's not some... It's not like some mysterious thing that we can never understand. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so here are some of the ways that we can hear God's voice. Okay, so in John chapter 10, verse 27, uh, someone have a Bible can read that for me? Or I'll pick it up here, hold on. It's John 10, 27. Okay, thank you. So my sheep listen to my voice, all right? So that doesn't mean, it doesn't say they sometimes hear my voice or they might hear my voice. No, I, I love the confidence of Jesus, right? He's like, no, my sheep hear my voice and they will follow me, all right? Okay, so be encouraged by that. Okay, so, um, so there's kind of lots of different ways, so the actual voice of God, right? So you have the, the examples in the Bible of, I think it was Elisha that gets into the rock, right? And there's all these things that pass by the rock. And then he actually hears the still, small voice of God. All right, so God can speak to us in a still, small voice, okay? God can also just interrupt our thoughts, right, with a thought of his. And you'll be like, where did that thought come from, all right? A lot of times it came from God, okay? So... I was worshiping in my car. I used to do that a lot when I had a long drive. And um, so I was just worshiping, singing praise songs. And then all of a sudden, I just felt like this thought, transfiguration. I'm like, what? Who thinks of transfiguration while they're driving down the highway? All right, that, that was the Lord speaking to me. He just dropped that word right into my heart. Right? That was important for me to, to, to get that day. And a few weeks later, I got 
the word, that was the same thing happening. I'm out there worshiping, just having a good time, and all of a sudden, boom, impartation. And it, I, it was, it wasn't, it's just a thought that came into my head of that specific word. And I was not thinking about those things. So I know, I know that was from God, right? He just dropped that right in there. And what he was teaching me at that time is that those were some of the things that he wanted to bless me with that eventually I was going to share with other people. Okay. Okay. And then there is the actual audible voice of God. I personally have never heard that. Um, so if anybody has in this room, if you could raise your hand and share an example, I would, I would love that. But I, I still believe that he talks in an audible voice. So I'm hoping that one day I can hear it. Have you heard it? Just once? Uh huh. Okay. Interesting. All right. That's so cool. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. So I I think he still, he obviously still does that. All right. So that's, that's a possibility. So you want to be looking out for that too. Okay. Another kind of main vehicle. So we, we have to, has to understand this, that God is speaking to us all the time and we might not even realize it. Okay. Um, And so he uses his voice. All right. He also uses dreams and visions and pictures. Okay, dreams, I think y'all talked about that a little bit. It seems like people are dreaming, right? So so the dreams usually happen when you're, right, when you're asleep. Okay, some of them are going to be literal. It would be super obvious what the, you know, what the interpretation is. And others might be a little bit more complicated where you really have to write it down and then pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit, okay, what is this? What does this mean? And then you'll be surprised. Like sometimes you'll get people to come up to you and they'll say something and that'll make sense with what your dream was, right? And they'll have no idea that they're talking to you about your dream, okay? God is just amazing like that. Okay, so that's dreams, okay? Visions, okay, are more kind of like a moving dynamic thing, kind of like seeing a movie in your head, okay? And I have had those, all right, so when I'm, when I'm trying to prophesy, what I, what I like to do is I like to speak in tongues for a little bit, and then what I do in my head is I picture kind of like a Microsoft Word document, right? Just picture a blank white screen. So that's what I try to do in my head, I try to make this blank white screen, and then I ask God, okay, what would you like, you know, wh- what are you trying to show me about this person, okay? Um, and so I've had, I've had visions, uh, before, so uh, when I was kind of soaking in worship, I had a, a vision once of a, there was just this body lying on the ground and it was all gray and lifeless. And then um, and then I, in the vision, I went over and I, I touched the body and then it turned into color and it came alive. And then I, I reached in to the body and pulled out a bar of gold, okay? And then, and then God showed me that I was supposed to give him the bar of gold. So I gave the bar of gold to God, and then God made this huge sword out of it, all right? And then he turned me around, and he saw, so there was this whole room full of golden weapons. Um, and so, and I've been praying through that for a long time. I've had that vision for a while, uh, but I believe, right, that that, that, that vision is talking about the, us in the prophetic ministry. Our job is to find the gold in people and to pull the gold out of them, right? And that God, once we do that, because everybody has gold in them, right? Because we all have the image of God inside of us. Nobody is worthless. Nobody is worthless. Everybody has gold on the inside. So it's our job as the prophetic team to reach in there with the spirit and pull out the gold. And some people feel worthless. So we need to show them. It's like, no, you have gold inside you. Look, right? And then we need to hand it to God and God's going to build them into this amazing golden army, right? Okay. So that's kind of an example of a vision I've had. 
All right. Now, I'm giving you these examples not to say that I'm so cool, right? I just want you to see kind of a practical way that, yes, this still happens, right? And so you have this idea of how God speaks to us. Okay, a lot of times I also get pictures, right? So sometimes I'll just get an image. So when I, I ask for that computer screen, and I'll get an image of, let's say, a river, okay? And then I'll ask God, okay, what is that river? And it'll be you know, a river of joy or a river of life, or I usually get some kind of like second confirmation of what the river is, okay? And then there's some times when that picture will change. Like for this Sunday when I, when I gave the word, I saw fire and then the fire moved. So it's almost kind of like moving pictures, um, but it's not quite a movie. So I'm not exactly sure how to explain that. Um, but that's a very common way for God to speak to us. He'll just put these images in your mind, all right? And then you kind of have to ask, okay, what does this mean? Do I need to say this now or is this for later, right? Because not everything we hear is for right now in this moment, okay? Um, and, and the Holy Spirit's usually pretty good at confirming those things. So you'll know when to say it and when not to. Okay, um, so we talked about pictures and visions. Okay, impressions. This is another way that people can hear from God. Well, sometimes when you're talking to people, you just get this, maybe you'll get just this feeling. Like you start to feel anxious. Okay, so maybe that's the Holy Spirit telling you this person's struggling with anxiety or some kind of anxiousness. All right, so then you can just start to uh, prophesy peace over them. All right, or you can speak, if you know a good verse in your head about peace, use that verse, all right? And what, what'll happen is, this is so cool, right? So you'll think of a verse, and it might be that person's favorite verse, right? That's just how awesome the Holy Spirit is, right? He'll bring something to your mind that'll totally connect with that person, all right? But we have to, you gotta speak those things in faith. Okay, um, other kinds of impressions that you can get. You might get a pain in your body Right, and that and the Holy Spirit's telling you that that person has that pain, right? And so you want to speak to the pain in their body then, and say, "We just command that to die in Jesus' name," and you know, prophesy some kind of blessing over them, right? Okay, so don't be, you know, if you get some kind of sharp pain, don't don't be like, "Oh man, why am I hurting?" Right? Oh, that's the Holy Spirit, right? That's God speaking to me. He's trying to warn me something about this other person. Okay. Uh, and then you might just, you might just get this kind of heavy feeling, like okay, I feel like this person is just burdened somehow. They have, they're carrying something that they need to let go, right? And so then you, you want to try to prophesy breakthrough, right? Some kind of divine intervention that's going to free them from that burden, okay? Um, and then seeing words is another way. Uh, some people, you might just start talking to them, and you might just see a word floating over their head, all right? That'd be pretty obvious, right, that that's from God, right? I, I, would, I would hope, right? I'd hope we would know that that's from God. Um, so sometimes when I do my computer, my blank screen thing, sometimes I'll get, uh, it's like a type, a word is typing out. I'll just get a one word, all right? So that, I call that seeing a word. Um, Uh, okay, and then uh, the, one of the other ways that God speaks to us, obviously, is through Scripture, through His Word. All right, you can, if you if you can't think of anything else nice to say to the person, all right, and you're just totally blanking out, all right, go back to Scripture. You can, right? God's Word is true all the time, 100. percent So you can always prophesy a Scripture you know over that person. All right? Yeah, yeah. Make a make sure that it's a yeah. Not, not one of the verses where they're going to be condemned to hell or something like that, right? Like, get, do like a, a Psalm 23 verse or, you know, a, a comforting verse, a ver, right? An encouraging verse. Thank you, Anna. Right. So you can always use scripture. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Okay. I don't do this one, but I, I saw this happen last time uh, with Amy and Kevin. They did this prophetic song. They just busted out into this amazing song with uh, praise for the Holy Spirit. And I have negative musical talent, all right? God has blessed me with a lot of talents. Music's not one of them. So more power to the people that can do that. It's awesome when it happens. Um, and it's just cool, even if you don't sing, just to hear them kind of 
really get into the worship with that. So you can prophesy through song. Okay, you can also get physical senses, okay? So maybe the Holy Spirit will give you a smell, right? That's possible, right? He can give you kind of, maybe you get like a sweet smell, all right? So that, that's something that you wanna pay attention to. That could be the Holy Spirit talking to you. Um, sometimes sight, you can just look at their clothing or something they're wearing and maybe an image will pop in your head or, or that reminds me of my great aunt or, you know, and she was this amazing woman of God. So maybe this person's gonna be an amazing woman of God, right? Okay, so things you, you just see right on their bodies. Okay, um, taste, right? God can even bring you, like maybe you get, all of a sudden you're praying for someone and you get kind of like a sweet flavor of honey in your mouth, or maybe you get a salty flavor, all right? That can be the Lord speaking to you, all right? We are the salt of the earth, right? There might be, you know, something connected there that you need to tell them, okay? And then also feeling, right? Sometimes, right, we lay hands on people for a reason, right? There's something special that happens when we do a direct connection, right? And the Holy Spirit in us touches the Holy Spirit in them. And God does amazing things, right? And so sometimes, and you want to ask about that, is it okay if I put my hand on your shoulder, right? At church, right, most people are, are cool with it, but if you're getting out doing ministry, you definitely want to ask first, right? Is it okay if I put my hand on your shoulder, or, you know, is it okay if I, uh, but yeah, God can do amazing things with the power of touch. Okay, we're almost done here. We're going to bring this to a close. Uh, um, there's also, we have examples in the Bible of what, what's called a trance, right? So that's kind of like an extended uh, vision. Um, and Peter falls into one of those, right? He falls into a trance when God tells him to kill the animal and eat it, all right? And I just want to encourage you, if God puts you in a trance, let's not be stubborn like Peter and say no, all right? Can we all agree? Let's just agree with God and do what he says, all right? Yeah, so, so it took a trance of Peter and God still had to say the thing three times. <laughs> Peter, he's gotta get the stubborn award, you know. He's gotta get the stubborn award. I can't wait to meet him when we get to heaven. It's gonna be great. Because uh, I'm a pretty patient person and he's really stubborn. So we're gonna be best friends. I, I know it. Okay, um, so yes, so God, that, that's kind of like an extended uh, amount of time that you spend in a, in, a, in a vision where God is just kind of giving you some kind of special download. If, if you get something like that, write as much of it down as you can, right? Because that's super important. God's trying to speak something that you'll need time probably to interpret. And you want to share it with friends, prophetic team that you trust, right? To, to get the full meaning out of it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and then uh, visitations. Uh, I, I keep, I've been praying for a long time. Like I would love to see an angel come and visit, right? But everybody in the Bible is always scared of the angels. So one of my friends told me once, John, I'm not sure you want to see an angel. They're pretty scary. But, uh, but you know, in what, I've always loved the, the verse in, in the Old Testament uh, where Elisha is surrounded by the army and he prays for his servant. He's like, God, please open his eyes. Like, there's more of us than there are of them. And the guy's looking at the army. He's like, there's no way. There's a huge army out there, right? But then he opens the eyes of the servant, and the servant is able to see temporarily into the spiritual realm, right? And he sees these huge chariots of fire all around, right? And that makes that little human army look so puny, <laughs> right? Um, and so... There's, there's people, right, that God gifts with that, right? He allows them to see sometimes into the spiritual realm. That's a gifting. Um, and so uh, be prepared for that. Maybe you're one of those people that's going to be able to, to, to see angels or to see, you know, what's happening in the spirit realm. And that's an amazing gift that you can share with other people. Um, uh, and then uh, when we start talking about the prophetic, uh, there's all kinds of books on this, but... God, a lot of times, will, will share stuff with us that doesn't make sense, uh, but it has some kind of symbolism or meaning. So, like, for my vision with the, the weapons, right, 
So that's something that I had to pray through. I was like, why, why is God building a bunch of weapons? That's kind of weird. But, uh, you know, one, once you start to pray through that, and then there's books that talk about that. So maybe a weapon actually means this. You talk to people that have been in the prophetic for years. You know, they, they have more information about these kind of things. Um, and so I wanted, I wanted to share one example, though, that I had. So when we were in this class last year, I was supposed to prophesy for Matt. And, um, and God showed me a picture of a car. And it was frozen. And, and I'm like, Matt, you're going to think I'm a dud here. This is just so weird. This makes no sense. So, but, you know, I was like, okay, I'm sure God gave that to me. So I, I said, All right, I'm just going to say it, even though it makes no sense. So I said, Matt, this makes no sense to me. But I see a car that's frozen. Does that mean anything to you? And he was like, yes. <laughs> that means a lot to me. Because he had, you know, a vehicle in his mind was kind of like a ministry. And he had felt like his and Amy's ministry. Is it okay if I tell this? Okay, sorry. I should have asked that. Um, he felt kind of like their ministry had been frozen for a while. Uh, and then as soon as he said that, then I saw another image, right, that some heat source came and thawed out the car. And I was like, okay, so your frozen time is over now, right? God is about to energize you guys, and you're going to start your ministry again. You know, and we would never have gotten there if I would have said, oh my gosh, this frozen car thing makes no sense. I'm not even going to say it. Okay, does that, make, does that make sense? So even if God gives you something totally weird and wacky, as long as it's not, you know, mean or evil or, you know, something that you can think is damaging, I encourage you, if you feel like it's from God, trust, just step out on faith and share it. Because you have no idea how much that might speak to the person. Okay. Um, yeah, and so there's, so there's all kinds of symbolism, like there's different colors that mean different things. Uh, Anna knows a lot about that. There's all kinds of books you can read about that. I'm not an expert in that myself, but, I, you know, you guys can figure it out. Um, but I just want to encourage everyone, right? God is speaking to us. We have this relationship with God, and however you hear him, if you hear words, if you get pictures you just get impressions. Um, I just want you to be kind of in tune for all of these different things that God could be doing. Uh, and then you have to take a step of faith. Right? You do have to step out in faith and be bold and be like, yeah, I got a frozen car. Frozen car. <laughs> you know, you, you have to do that. You have to take that step. Okay. Um, that's all I have. If I, can I just pray for you guys real quick? Uh, so, Heavenly Father, God, I'm so thankful that, uh, that, you, that this, this prophetic thing is not about performance, right? You're just glad that we're your children and you love us, whether we get it right with the prophecy or not. But I, I just want to bless this group, and I, I just want to speak over them the ability to have clarity, God, and to... And if they've never had pictures before, God, I just speak pictures over them. God, I speak visions over them that they will have a vision if they've never had a vision. God, that, 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 and in some time of worship, God, that you're going to break through and you're going to drop a word into their heart, God. And I pray that it would just light a fire in them, that they would get so energized about prophecy and about hearing your voice that they want more and more and more. And God, I just equip your people to go and do amazing things and to spread the word of God and to spread the goodness of God and uh, to lift people up through prophecy. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, like that song, that, uh, that man is on fire. Instead of that girl's on fire. <laughs> I felt like that about Matt and Amy last week too. I'm like, wow, that is fire. That's awesome. John, good job. Hopefully that brought some clarity to everybody, but if that didn't, uh, we're about to do an activation. Um, and this activation is going to help clarify how you are hardwired to hear from God. So every single one of you have a primary way that you hear from God. 
And Chris and Jamie are going to lead us through that activation. Um, this isn't always how God speaks to you, but it will be primary how God speaks to you. So what's important about understanding that about how you're hardwired is that because I touched on this last time, because of our uniqueness, because of the way that you are built and your personality, um, God speaks to us in our own unique way. And a lot of times it's through our imagination, um, through our senses. And once you tune into that, that is like your, it'll be your default. It'll be what you are comfortable um, like stepping out in every time. And once you get comfortable with that default, you'll want to practice other ways. All right. So then that is where desire comes in. That is where perseverance comes in. That's where just practice comes in. So what we want to do for those of you who are new to the prophetic um, is to help you discover what that default way that God speaks to you is right now. So welcome Chris and Jamie. They are our kid men pastors. I think everybody knows that. So I don't even think y'all need an introduction. Thanks, Anna. John, that was so good. Your enthusiasm. I'm just like, let's go prophesy. That was so good. And all the practical examples are just so good. Um, this is my favorite session. I've done this class three times, and I learn something every time. And this is my favorite session of the whole class because we get to tune in. And tonight you're going to leave more confident that you can hear God and how you do it. So it's like my favorite night. I was going to play a joke on you and pair you up and tell you how to sing a prophetic song over each other. But... <laughs> We're not doing that. Not doing I'm just going to cover, Chris, uh, John covered how God speaks to us in different ways, visions, dreams, and all that. And Chris is going to kind of talk about how we hear God. There's a few different ways. Um, I am a total feeler. <laughs> not only do I feel things, like I just have this, they call it a feeler knower. Like I have this sense of just kind of knowing and feeling things inside. But um, Anna says, is it a knobby? knobby. <laughs> it's a Hebrew word and it means to bubble up. So if you've ever prayed with me, I likely asked if I could touch your arm or your hand because there's like a conduit for me personally that happens when I pray for somebody. When I touch them, it's like I can hear the Lord in a, in a more personal way. And so um, I love how many examples you gave of how we hear God's voice. I know, I think we're yeah. <laughs> and like, oh. um, what I loved is that's my primary voice. I'm a feeler knower, and you guys are going to tune into yours tonight. But I'll never forget the time that God gave me a um, word of knowledge in service, and that doesn't happen. That, that was the only time it ever happened. But I was worshiping, and I suddenly got this horrible pain in my wrist. Like out of, the, I don't have problems with my wrist, and I immediately knew that's what was happening. I was like, Anna, like I think God wants to heal people's wrists, and sure enough, two people in the service. And the Lord touched their bodies that day. And it was so cool. I was like, that's amazing. That's so cool. So um, Chris is going to cover, but I want to go over those rules that Amy and Matt talked about last week, are kind of our guide rails for the prophetic before we do activate. I'll do activations. Chris and I will help you. Um, we're going to do two when he's done kind of talking about how we hear. But we want to do no, no dates, mates, babies, or major life changes. We want to stay away from directional words. That's not what we're doing. We're practicing. We're beginning. We're stepping out. So we're going to be positive. We're going to be brief, which for some of us, that'll be easier than others. Uh, we just want to give, like John said, you did such a good job. You just want to give what you get. And that's it. We don't have to embellish it. We don't have to dress it up. Just give what you get because it, it likely, I mean, it definitely, if it's from God, it means something to them. And we can always ask those clarifying questions. Did that mean anything to you? And, and go from there. Um, be kind. Be humble. Be bold. Words should confirm what the Lord's already doing. Um, they should bring them into an encounter with love, righteousness, peace, joy, hope. Um, would it be okay if I share an encouraging word? I am thinking or I'm feeling something for you. Can I give that to you? Um, all of those. Let's see. If it looks and feels like love, you can be confident that it's God. So tell, tell us how. Tell us how? <laughs> okay, first I'll tell you, I'll tell you, um, like, I was the, the, the guy, and I think I've talked to some of you guys out here about me not understanding the prophetic. <laughs> the reluctancy, I'm like, ah, oh, that's kind of wacky. I was the guy that would see people running up and down the stages and falling, and I would tell her, I was like, that's, that's whack. I was like, how, 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 how are these dudes, how are these dudes pushing people down? <laughs> I was like, you're not pushing me down. <laughs> but so, you know, it, it's more of learning, right? I had to learn and understand how God speaks. 
And, and part of that is being willing, right? To, to, to understand and, and tell yourself, you know what? Okay, I'll try this out. I'm, I'm gonna see if this stuff works. And how do you do that is you gotta be willing. You gotta, you gotta believe. And the second part was to believe. Um, understanding that God can speak and he wants to speak to us. And for, for, you have to understand that, to know that God, yeah, God does want to speak to me. Um, but, but after doing that, you know, Anna, <laughs> she decided to do a, a prophetic class and, and she was like, you want to join? I was like, well, I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'm going to do it because you're leading it and, and you know, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. So I was shocked because the, what we're learning, the, the style that we're learning today is not what I anticipated at all. It was nothing. I thought it was going to be foo-foo and, you know, pushing people down and stuff like that. And I was like, no, it's actually teaching you how to listen, how to, to know if it's God speaking, right? Like I used to always think that's my thought, you know, thoughts that come to my mind. I was like, that, those are my thoughts. I'm saying that. <laughs> but then I'd start to realize, and it talks like, how, how do you know if it's you or how do you know if it's God speaking to you? And a lot of times, the first thing I was like, there's no way I could think that fast. If God puts a word in my mouth or in my head, there's no way I could have thought of that. It's, it's something like random that I would never think of or, or say. And I'd be like, okay, so maybe, maybe that is. And then I would test it. I would test the theory. And I would, you know, we, we do breakout sessions like this. And I would just say it. <laughs> you know, and some wacky things came out like what John was saying when we were doing our prophetic. I, I had said... You know, I saw Charlie Brown. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? It was a peanut character. I was like, I, I don't know if that means anything to anybody. And um, he was, you know, Snoop, it was Charlie Brown kicking a football and falling down under a tree. And um, Kevin uh, stepped up and he goes, that's, that's for me. And I was like, what? <laughs> no way. It, that's totally... At that point, I, I realized, okay, you know what? Nothing's whack. You know, I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm just going to say what it is. So, I think just just by you guys being here and and taking that that leap of faith to say, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to try this out. I'm going to. I'm going to see if this this really works. I I, I want to congratulate you for doing that because it's hard, right? Especially if you've been hurt or there's a lot of belief. Uh, you know, people have been hurt by prophetic too. It's just a matter of of understanding truth and, and not truth and, and understand if it is from, from, from God. Cause sometimes you'll hear things like what you said, you know, you go and try to prophesy over somebody and you see fire and brimstone. You're like, Oh, I'm definitely not going to say that. So what do I do at that point? You know, um, go back to scripture. You know, John hit a lot of key points and I had a lot of what you, what, what you were saying is what I was, you know, what I put down here, but the, the first thing I want to tell you is, you know, it says here, believe that you can hear from God. Like, believe that. Truly believe that. There's a scripture. So it's in James 1, 6. It says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed away through the wind. So I, I read that and I was like, you know what? That's kind of raw. That's kind of hard, right? <laughs> if I don't believe, I'm going to get tossed in the sea. But it's really not like that. It's, it's basically what you're saying is don't doubt yourself. Like if you're going to believe and, and trust that I'm going to give you a word. So that, that, that hit home for me. The other thing is God longs to speak to us. Like he wants to speak to us. It's like, it's like if you read the, you know, the, the New Testament, it, Jesus says it a lot. He says, open, open your eyes to see and your ears to hear. He says it like a lot of times. It's like you read a different book and it, it says that, but open your eyes and your ears and you'll hear. Um, the other thing is ask yourself, you know, if you're in the middle of a, you know, prophetic, you're going to, you're going to talk and you, you know, you have somebody you want to pray over, ask yourself of your word. And it says it up here. It says edify, comfort, encourage, right? Those, those, those three things. I always, I always think about that. Is it good? Is it, am I going to build this person up today? Am I going to, you know, encourage them? And if it's none of that, then I'm not going to say it. If it is, then, you know, yes, I'm just going to spit it out and, and say it. Um, and here, here's one is uh, you said it earlier. It says to, to be at peace and just know that nobody's here. Nobody's going to be perfect, right? We're not here to, to, uh, yeah, to show off. It's just like, we're all learning. It's a training session. We're trying to understand. So just know that it's okay to make a mistake. If you make a mistake, just, just learn from it. You know, and sometimes if I say, you know what, 
John, I see a beautiful, valiant stallion. <laughs> and he's running down the mountain. You know, I don't know what that means, but maybe it means something to him. But just be bold and just say it. You know, if it's wrong, then John will either say it's wrong or he'll just go with it. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that it, you don't know until you try. You got you to gotta try. Um, so how do we hear? There's, there's, a, there's a seer. Now, I'm just going to read these out because I think it's important for me to cover every, everything in here. But the first one I saw was a seer. Uh, you will see pictures in your mind. These pictures may require interpretation, but you are to give exactly what you see. And that's kind of what, what you were saying, John. I think that's, that's good. The other one is a hear. You will hear what the Spirit says. This is actually an internal audible voice. Normally, you just feel like you're hearing something. Once you hear, you share what the Spirit is saying to or for that person. So that's important to say it. Just spew it out. Yeah. Um, I personally believe that God is always speaking. I know we, like, I think he's always talking to us. And I think he wants to talk to us more than we even want to hear him. A lot of times we're reaching out for God to solve a problem or give us a solution. And we're like waiting on an answer. But in the times between that, when we have peace, we're not so hungry, right? But God is always chasing out, like he's always for us and he's always speaking. So um, one of the things that I was thinking about this week is how God He's in us. I mean, the spirit is in us. We have a God that in, he's dwelling. We're his dwelling place. So it's like his voice and ours. And I think that was hard. I think when I first started thinking about the prophetic was we're expecting some Morgan Freeman voiceover in our head. Like John, was, I mean, God can speak like that. He could sound like an audible voice, which would be super cool. But more, more often, and we'll find this, it sounds just like ours. It sounds like our voice. It sounds like our thoughts because we're made in his image and we're, that's what we're meant to sound. And so it's just tuning into that. Um, Sean Bowles says it like this. It's like, we'll hear or, or have a thought or a feeling, whatever, but it's like an upgraded version of us. It's like better than something we'd be thinking at the time or in the moment. Right. And that's how we know we're hearing God. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's real, you know, it's, it's paying attention to that. Um, when he's communicating with you, the other one was nowhere, nowhere, right? Yeah. So you just uh, seem to know something. Like some people just know. Uh, I don't, I'm not one of those persons, but um, it's, you just seem to know something and it feels right and you can't explain how you know, you just know. Um, you'll start to recognize this as a pattern. So some people just know, they'll just spit it out. And I'm like, okay, go for it. And that's, that's all you, you got this. Um, the other one is a feeler, this is my wife. Um, you may actually feel something, for instance, um, nearsighted so I'm like struggling because I'm trying to see this um, for instance uh, you may actually give a word of knowledge that um, about a physical healing that well you know John you talked about this you know that happened to you uh, it was at the uh, you know she felt a little pain in her wrist and she was able to obey and, and listen to it and it, it meant something to somebody so those are just four easy ones right seer hear knower feeler and I think during this activation is, um, and she may tell you, is just think about those, those four. It's real simple. Just try to hone in on those four and then figure out, okay, let me figure out which one means the most to me. What's important to me? How, how do I think God's going to communicate with me? But just remember those thoughts that you have. If they're good, if they're edifying, it's God. He's speaking to you. And he wants you to, to spit it out and, and say something. So we're going to do activation now. Yeah. yeah. Should I? time for both okay um we're doing okay okay so last week we did that really simple grounding exercise did anybody use that this week I use that one over and over the one where we're asking God do you love me father do you love me we're quieting our hearts right anybody else use that this week I use it all the time like all the time just to quiet ourselves so we're gonna start there we're gonna um everybody just close your eyes Father, we thank you, God, that there is no separation between us and you. We thank you, Father, that we are made to hear your voice or created in your image. And Father, right now, we just um, are posturing ourselves to hear you, Lord. And so we're asking, Father, right now, um, let's just ask him, Father, do you love me? And we're waiting for that yes. You can feel it. You can hear it. One time I literally heard, heck yes. <laughs> and that sounds a lot like I speak. So, you know, it could be, you know it, I love you. 
I don't just love you, I'm crazy about you. It's a yes from God. And so with our, I want y'all to keep your eyes closed and we're gonna do another one. I'm gonna name something very familiar to everybody in this room. And you're gonna grab hold of the first thing you get after I say it. So you're looking out for a feeling, you're looking out for a, a picture, you're looking out for, maybe it could be a smell, um, any of the things that we talked about tonight. So Father, I thank you that you're gonna speak, you're gonna show us, God, how we hear from you tonight. So here we go. H-E-B. You guys grab hold of that first thing that you got. Anybody see a picture? Who saw a picture? <laughs> Christina. What'd you see? Anybody want to share? Just the sign? Yeah. Anybody get a feeling? Oh, did you want to share? Yeah, that's good. Anybody else want to share? Aisles, yeah. You saw what? Oh, the plus. Yeah, I love that. I saw the plus. That's awesome. Um, I actually felt a feeling. I don't know if in your HEB you walk in and there's like blowers blowing down. I just like, I felt that whoosh and it's like that familiar feeling walking into HEB. So that is just another really easy grounding exercise that you can do to kind of tune in to your primary way that you hear God. Not that you're putting them in a box. You can hear them all these different ways, um, but that's your primary way. All right. Are y'all ready for class two? Okay. Was that awesome? Who just felt like, man, that was so exciting because it confirmed, like, that was God. Like, I heard God, right? A lot of times when you're first starting out, stepping out in faith, and then and you hear the confirmation from somebody else, and you hear that, um, the feedback, you realize, oh my goodness, I did hear God, right? So that's really exciting as you're stepping out. So my number one encouragement to you is trust that the Holy Spirit does speak to you. Trust his voice, okay? Uh, sometimes we wonder, is it me or is it God? And we'll wrestle with, is it me or is it God? I don't know if it's me or I don't know if it's God, right? So because we sometimes struggle with that, with that um, we hesitate sometimes to release words because we don't know if it's from God. So the very most important thing to ask yourself is, does it line up with love? Does it feel like love? Does it sound like love? Does it look like love? You know, if it is love, release that word. That is God. Um, I remember years ago, um, right when we were starting Life Share Church, I was heading out to my car and I just heard, in my spirit, I heard the Lord say, what if every single person in Life Share Church were healed? Like, what if Life Share Church was the healthiest church in the city? And I remember, like, I literally dropped what I was holding in my hands because I realized that is not me. Like, I'm not the type of person who's, you know, I'm not an empathetic type person, right? So, uh, you know, in the past, I grew up in a church that, you know, would probably just say, Lord, if it be your will or hope you feel better. Um, and that's about it. But when the Lord spoke to me, I knew that wasn't me. I knew that was God because that, and I, at the time I didn't realize that was the heart of God, but it was my mandate to go search out scripture and find out what God's word actually says about healing. And it completely changed my belief system. And you can't convince me today that healing wasn't accomplished on the cross 2000 years ago. So I feel like in a lot of ways, that's my mandate from God, that and, and teaching the righteousness um, uh, that, that we received in Christ Jesus. And, um, you know, God wants us to uh, advance the kingdom with the truth of the gospel and what he provided on the cross. And that means sometimes challenging our um, natural mindset. 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through 15 says that the natural person, oh wait, hold on one second. I need a tissue. I stuck a piece of gum in my mouth and I, I looked back at the video last time and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was smacking my gum the whole time. How annoying was that? <laughs> 
so I'm t- removing it. Um, 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through 15 says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. So our natural ma- uh, man... And here I brought an illustration for y'all. I used this in a message uh, about a year ago. I made it myself. I'm very proud of it. Um, Because I went to the hardware and nobody helped me. Um, (laughs) This right here represents you and your makeup as a person. All right? So I touched on this a little bit last time. But here is the spirit of God, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of Jesus Christ, that is your spirit. So when you were born again, you became a new creation. The old was dead, buried with Christ. You were co-crucified with Christ and you were resurrected to new life and you were given the spirit of Jesus Christ. So every single one of you are walking temples of the Holy Spirit. God does not come and go. His spirit does not come and go. His spirit dwells inside of you. The spirit of God is always in you. The spirit of God is always talking to you because the spirit of God dwells in you. That is really important to understand because sometimes we feel like there's a disconnect between us and God based on our behavior, but that's not true. Our behavior is simply um, if, if we're in a habit of sin, what it does is it turns the faucet off from being able to hear God. You, you simply just feel like you don't feel God, but that's not true. The reality is the spirit of God it always dwells in you and, and nothing can separate you from the love of God, nothing. All right, so that is a confidence that you have as a believer that nothing can separate you from the love of God. You are in him and everything that Jesus is, is you. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. All right, so that revelation right there is your foundation as a believer, all right? That's your starting point. So whenever you don't feel like you don't hear God, you go back and you speak over yourself what God has said about you, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And as Jesus is, so are you in this world, all right? So that is your spirit. Your heart is the valve, and I spoke about this on the message on forgiveness a few weeks ago. The heart is the valve Um, that releases the things of the spirit into your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And here is your flesh, your body, the part that you can see, the part that gets sick. Um, And oftentimes sickness is, you know, because of, you know, what's happening in your soul, right? Uh, How many of you know that toxic thoughts and toxic thought patterns releases chemicals in your body that does produce sickness, right? So the way that you think actually does um, bring healing, right? Your belief system actually can bring healing. So it is important to understand and always challenge our belief system. If your belief system or something you're believing about God doesn't line up with the um, finished work of Jesus Christ, then there is a blockage there, all right? So that blockage Blockage is found right here in your heart, all right? So it's important that you understand this because it is in your heart right here that you must guard because in your heart, um, if you have things like offense, if you have things like unforgiveness, if you have things like unbelief that are cluttering your heart, that's gonna prevent the things of the spirit to filter into your soul and out from your flesh because when we are, uh, when we have that heart valve turned on and the faucet of the spirit is flowing through us, we're actually releasing the things of the spirit. So oftentimes when like you're praying for healing for somebody and, um, you know, that's why a lot of times we, we just speak in tongues. If you speak in tongues, what it does is it stirs up the spirit within you and it causes your natural mind, your natural senses to, um, to come under the authority of the spirit. All right. So the spirit starts um, taking over, right, and, and and releasing. You're able to release the spirit. So oftentimes, too, um, if you are waiting for prophetic words, speaking in tongues, it stirs up the spirit within you 
reminding yourself who he is, what Jesus did on the cross, that stirs up the spirit, and you release the spirit of life. So that's what we're doing. We're just releasing the spirit of life. And that's exactly what happens in a uh, prophetic community. Because um, people are activating the spirit, you begin sensing the spirit until, to the point where it's tangible even. You can sense the spirit of God to the point where it's tangible. Have you ever been, um, I'm sure you have, because our, I, would, I think um, our Sunday worship experience a lot of times you can sense and feel the Spirit of God, can you not? And that is because so many people are, it's like heartfelt worship. When you're tuned in to heartfelt worship, the Spirit of God occupies worship, right? Um, so that's um, really important to understand when you're learning to prophesy is to, first of all, keep in mind that God's voice is always speaking to you. If it sounds like love, if it lines up with love, that's God. Okay, that's you. It's God. So just go with it. All right? Um, and also, your natural mind is always going to cause you to doubt. Your natural mind is going to cause you to ask yourself things like, and that's kind of strange. I don't know if that's from God. I don't, is that just me? That's your natural mind. All right? So, Um, I like to think of it this way, especially if I'm struggling with my natural, like my flesh, doubt, um, I'm worried, I'm scared. I used to be very, uh, uh, like, not a people pleaser, but the fear of man used to consume me, where I used to worry about what people thought of me and and their opinion about me. But I had to learn that um, I had to look at my flesh as my slave, All right, so uh, the spirit is king, your soul is your servant, and your flesh is your slave. So make your flesh submit to the spirit, all right? So that's really key because um, when we are able to get our flesh to line up with that, um, we're we're not being led by our flesh as much, okay? If you consider your flesh your slave, Um, there are certain things like some people tease me because I'm a very disciplined person, but I'm not a naturally disciplined person. I've just made my flesh submit. All right. I make myself get up early in the morning. I make myself, um, have devotions and pray. I make myself eat healthy. I make myself exercise. And the reason I do those things is because I'm making my flesh submit to the spirit. All right, and I'm making my flesh master, I mean my spirit master, so that I'm sensitive when God is speaking to me, I'm in tune with what he's speaking to me. So the key to um, make our ourselves more in tune with the spirit is to make your flesh obey. All right? So think of yourself as a soldier. All right? So when you come to church on Sunday, if you think of yourself as a soldier, you're ready for your assignment. You come ready to hear from God, and you're ready to obey. All right? And that's a total mind shift, because a lot of times we come to church to receive. But if we start tuning ourselves into the voice of God, and you um, make yourself come into submission with the Spirit, you are not being led by your flesh so much. And, and a lot of things like disunity and gossip and offense and all these little petty things that happen in churches, the, you know, all the slander and, you, you know, did somebody look at me the wrong way and some, somebody opened the door hard and hit me and so I was crying. You know, I hear all sorts of things. You know, so it's really important to get ourselves to and position ourselves into that, you know, I am a, um, I'm a servant of the Most High, okay? Now, we're children of God, all right? So we are children of God. That's important. But when you um, come ready on assignment, you will be ready to um, release prophecy to people. You will be ready to serve. You will be ready to speak life to people. Okay? All right. Now, I want to take a minute, um, and this is a little bit more in line with a more of a leadership conversation that we're about to have. Now, there's some of you who are, who came just to learn how to hear God's voice. Um, And so I would just recommend that you take this teaching and tuck it away. 
um, for you know, a time where you've matured into leadership. Um, some of you are coming um, because you want to be a part of the prophetic team. Um, those of you who, um, you know, you're like, LifeShare is my home. I'm staying here. How does God want to use me? I want to grow in the prophetic. All right, this uh, lesson is for you. Either way, it is especially, young people, let me tell you something. I'm so glad that you guys are here because a lot of um, my leadership process started at your age because I was listening to um, teaching on leadership when I was young. And uh, it, it just naturally um, progressed into that the older I got. I didn't have so much to struggle with, okay? So I'm so glad that you guys are here. So the three things that I want to cover um, are what is the gift of prophecy? What is prophetic ministry and what is the office of the prophet? Okay? Those are really common questions, really important to understand the definition of those three. In 1 Corinthians 14, 26 through 33, what then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. That's really important. Building up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. That passage right there is a governmental passage. It's telling you how the prophetic should flow in a healthy way in a church. All right, so not only will that, um, it's a safeguard so that we don't prophesy wrongly and, and there isn't mass confusion, but it's also um, teaching how that, First of all, that the prophetic should be flowing in a church, and this is a healthy way to do it, okay? And so those of you here, especially those who want to be on a prophetic ministry team, it's a little sobering too because now you're entering into a position where you will have to guard what you say and how you prophesy, all right? So it's not just the person who prophesies to you. It's now you are having to um, check your motives, make sure that you're prophesying out of uh, the correct position, okay? And that's to safeguard the person that you're prophesying to and to safeguard yourself. All right. So I already touched a little bit about um, the spirit of prophecy. I mentioned to you that during corporate worship, particularly during worship, there is a spirit of prophecy that is often, um, it's, I don't want to say the word released. It's more that it's stirred up. All right. So I know that there are some people that believe that it's like this outside spirit that just kind of falls down. But I personally don't think that's what happens. My personal a belief is that when the spirit is being stirred up within believers, there's a unifying presence that is rich and tangible that happens in a corporate gathering in which the prophetic is honored. When the prophetic is honored and when um, we are honoring the finished work of Jesus Christ, there is something, it's just like God, there's so much pleasure that God has on that. There is so much, um, it's like the joy of heaven is released. And that I can definitely, like you can sense even angelic presence in a room and heaven and earth being unified in, in situations like that. Has anybody ever experienced that before? I have experienced that so many times in which it's almost like this thin veil between heaven and earth that you can almost step through. And it's a powerful encounter. So during corporate worship, that is what happens, especially when the spirit of prophecy among um, believers that are stirred up together happens. Now, um, let's see, what else did I want to say that about that? 
All right, the definition of the spirit of prophecy is when any believer can prophesy, especially during times of worship. All right, I talked about heartfelt and deep worship. Let me tell you another um, way in which the spirit of prophecy is very rich. Revelation 19.10, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When our focus is Jesus Christ and the finished work of Jesus Christ, there is nothing that God finds more pleasure in than revealing his son to us. And it takes the spirit to reveal the son and it takes the son to reveal the father. So when our hearts and our minds are in tune with the finished work of Jesus Christ, prophecy flows because you are making much of Christ. We are making much of the son. Man, there is nothing that happens in my spirit more powerfully than when I am talking about his son. So during this um, few weeks, I want to recommend two books that are my absolute like top favorite books to recommend um, in keeping our hearts and our minds saturated in who Jesus Christ is and what he accomplished for us. The first one is Unveiling Jesus, and the second one is Awake to Righteousness. Those are my most recommended books that, um, you know, if anybody, you know, wants to know more about the finished work of Jesus Christ, Grace, right here, all right? So I want to recommend that you get these books, saturate Saturate yourself in the finished work of Jesus Christ because what's going to happen is prophecy is going to just be flowing, all right? So, you know, just, again, just read and focus on Jesus Christ, okay? So um, I'll, I uploaded some resources just a few minutes ago onto the Prophetic um, Planning Center app, and that is a bunch of prophetic books. These two will be added on there, okay? Those other ones are just supplements. If you just want to learn more, get more refined in the prophetic, there are some particular books on, like if you're a seer, there's a book about just that, all right? If you're a feeler, there's a book on just that, all right? So it's for those of you who are who are readers and, and love to um, learn as much as possible. Karis and Hussein. <laughs> Definitely, you know, you two are the ones who are going to be reading those books. <laughs> that was for you. Uh, um, let's see. All right, I talked about speaking in tongues. Um, also, the um, uh, decluttering the spirit of offense and unforgiveness. All right, it's vital that we, okay. This is important, you guys, especially those who are going to be, actually for everybody. You cannot prophesy over somebody that you have an offense over. So if you are offended with somebody or if you um, have any kind of unforgiveness and you're on a ministry team and you're up to prophesy, don't do it. All right? Because love won't be flowing. Now, I can tell you that if you pray for that person, unforgiveness is going to get flushed out of your heart. All right, so it's important. If you have an offense with somebody, pray for them. All right, that happens in marriages, right? Who can tell me in your marriage, if you're offended with your spouse, if you pray for them, you can't stay offended with them, okay? So it's important that we be praying for one another. We position ourselves in an attitude of love and getting rid of offense in our hearts. And this includes ministries. This includes our past. This includes anything that would clutter our hearts. Get rid of it. Flush it out of your hearts. All right, that's really important, especially if you prophesy over somebody. And that's why it's also important before you prophesy over them, um, pray for them. Just, just pray, Lord, thank you for so-and-so. I thank you for the gift that they are. I thank you that you saved them. I thank you that the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, Lord, give me your heart for them. And then trust that he's given you a word for them and just release that word. All right, what is the gift of prophecy? The definition um, that I have for you is that it is an inspirational prophecy where our aim is to encourage, build up, and comfort people. It is non-directive, not correctional, and seeks to bless people and glorify the Lord. Okay, so those who are operating in prophecy are speaking blessing, you're building up their faith, you're comforting, all right? So 
The other stuff, directional words, those words get reserved for people who operate in the office of the prophet. All right, so if anybody has ever given you a directional word and they were not an official prophet under the ministry of someone else, you know, and they're, you know, a legit prophet, flush that word, all right, because that probably was not, that was given, you know, they, it wasn't for them to give, all right? They, they had really had no business giving that word, okay? Now, if it worked out well for you, great, but I haven't heard a whole lot of times where that has come off correctly. So just avoid it, all right? Safeguard yourself and just avoid that. Um, all right, so the gift of prophecy is a gift given by grace. Um, something that I like to um, teach, if you've known me long enough, you've been here long enough, one of the things that I teach are that we, are been, we have been given everything in Christ Jesus when we were saved. Every spiritual gift is actually yours. It has been given to you already, but it was given to you in seed form. So like things like, um, you may consider yourself an inpatient person, all right? And you will say things like, I am not a patient person. Well, the reality is, is that you actually do have the seed of patience in you because it's one of the seeds of the spirit. So what you do is you tap into the seed and you water that seed and you operate in that seed and that seed will grow until it no longer is something that you, ident you don't identify with the impatience anymore. All right, so, so if somebody comes up to me and asks for, you know, I just need um, joy. Well, I will say, well, you already have it. All right, because it is given to you already in seed form. Because it's in seed form, what we do is we line up with joy and we release joy, okay? So the same with the gifts of the Spirit. We have all actually been given the gifts in seed form. Now, there are some that are going to be operating in some of those gifts um, Somehow it just comes natural for you, all right? One of the things that the Lord um, had put on my heart to study is on healing. However, I don't operate in healing very, like I can pray for a hundred people before I'll see one person healed, but I still pray. You know, and the way that I see it is, okay, if this person is just like my children, if I go in and um, take one of my children on a shopping spree, I expect my other child to look at the receipt to see how much I spent on that child and expect me to spend that same amount or more on them. So whenever somebody is operating in a special gift of the Spirit, I and I want to operate in that, I will just simply say, Lord, you gave it to them? I want the same thing, all right? And so that desire is what's going to drive you to keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on until you start seeing it operate in your life. For others, it'll be easier. For other times, it's going to be a little harder, but that doesn't mean you don't have it. All right? It just means that you need to go after it. So desire is everything. All right. Um, I have a few other things there. You can read um, those yourself. Um, keep in mind, everybody can prophesy. Every person can prophesy. We already covered that. Um, and like I said, desire is key. The fact that you are here is key. All right. What is prophetic ministry? All right. I want to show you all a little thing here. Um, this, just focus on the top one for a second. That top, you know, chart right there, imagine that as a swimming pool. Y'all see it? Okay. So in a swimming pool, you might enter a swimming pool and you enter in the very shallow end where it's kind of ankle deep, right? And then you go a little further and it's way steep and then you get into the deep end and it's in over your head, right? Well, the prophetic ministry is very much like that. When we are, because everybody can prophesy, we are all entering into the ankle deep water. So we, you cultivate it by practicing it, all right? But that's the everybody can prophesy. 
when you enter into prophetic ministry and what you're doing on a, like, you know, we have our prophetic teams. Um, when you are doing that on a regular basis, you're practicing it. And it's, it's, you're entering into that waist deep. You're practicing. You're getting clearer. You're um, learning to prophesy more accurately. You're beginning to trust the voice of God easier and easier. All right. So that, um, that is where the majority of people will stay. All right, the majority of you will stay in that waist deep area. All right, and that is actually a very important component of a local church because when you are in that waist deep prophetic ministry, what you're doing is you're partnering with a vision of the church. You're partnering with the leader, with the vision of the leader of the church, okay? So every church has a, a particular assignment. And when you come into partnership with a church and, and with the leader and their vision, and you're partnering with, with Ted and I, what you're doing is you're entering into the kingdom assignment of the church. And it's a powerful position because what you're doing is you are driving off attacks of the enemy. You are using your voice to activate creatively the things of the spirit. You're helping birth things in the kingdom because we have to birth things, right? A lot of times we may have a vision. Ted is, um, no, you don't. Um, a lot of times Ted will, will, the Lord will put a vision in his heart. My job is to partner with that vision and help him um, um, see that through. But your job is to partner with that as well. All right, and, and, and you have an assignment with that. And it, there's this like unity that happens where we help you accomplish what God has called you to do, but it happens when you also partner with the vision of the church and the leadership of the church, okay? It's this governmental system that God put in place that just works, all right? That's the way it works in the kingdom. So um, in those who are in the prophetic ministry, you will mature quickly. You mature quickly because you are constantly activating the spirit. All right. You bring, you help bring God's perspective. You help release vision. You help release calling and you under, uh, undermine the enemy. Um, and you help the church fulfill its call and you are part of that. Uh, it draws attention to the supremacy of, of God in times of trouble um, it also ignites faith and hope and gives the body energy to press in. And unity is maintained. That's really important. You cannot have a church that is disjointed when there is a spirit of prophecy at work, when you are prophesying love and life over each other. All right, the last thing I want to cover is the office of the prophet. The office of a prophet is uh, somebody who... It's an office, all right? It's not a gift. It is, um, it is a recognized appointment by the leadership of a church, all right? So somebody who is a prophet, hopefully, now this doesn't always happen. There's some people who are self-appointed prophets. And, uh, you know, the first thing, you know, I've had that happen. One day, I just got a call out of the blue person I'd never met before called my number. I have no idea how he got my number. And he introduced himself and said, I am prophet so-and-so. I am here to serve you. And I'm like, prophet of a what? And who put you in place as a prophet? Like, to me, that was a first indicator that, like, no, sir, we don't just do that kind of thing. Here's my husband's number. Run it through him. All right? So nothing gets me more fired up than somebody who is a self-appointed prophet. All right? Please. Don't listen to somebody who's a self-appointed prophet, all right? So if somebody is, has not submitted to a local church, is not under the authority of a pastor in a church, they're not going to be welcome here, all right? Because they're not operating out of the correct spirit, all right? So somebody who is an appointed prophet is somebody who has matured in the gift of prophecy. They've been accurate in their prophetic um, 
releases, they've partnered with the church, they're submitted to a pastor, and then the pastor recognizes that and appoints them as the office of the prophet. Now, oftentimes you'll see that churches utilize these prophets. Um, the first person I can think of is a man named Chris Vallotton from Bethel Church. He was appointed as the as a prophet over Bethel, and he's used a lot to teach in the prophetic. Um, and, um, and the Lord has used him in, in powerful ways, the person who operates in the, in, in the office of the prophet will be the ones who probably will give um, words that are directional. They will give forth telling words. They will give, uh, they will have influence with leaders. They will have influence with government. They will have influence with kings. You know, so if God has called you to operate in the office of the prophet, that is going to be something that Ted and I will recognize. All right, and we are going to start just watching, but it, but it's up to you to to be responsible for that, and the responsibility that comes with that is coming under the leadership of the church. Now, Ted, I wanted to ask you a question. Come up here, Mr. Microphone. We need your mic. As the pastor of the church, what would you, what would cause you to recognize somebody in that particular position, the office of the prophet? Yeah, so um, I think there's, there's, there's years of seasoning. That's the main thing. You know, the local church is a big deal. You know, I know a lot of times we hear things in passing that, oh, I went to this church, I went to that church, oh, he's great, and oh, I don't like him. You know, we talk so carelessly sometimes about the local church, but like this is it. You know, everything, uh, we've heard this from John Maxwell, everything rises and falls on leadership. And if you look at the scriptures, the plan and purpose of God flows through the local church. And so when someone has been in a local church, we've even met people that have come to us and said, I want to be a five-fold minister, but they haven't even been faithful in a local church. And it, it's, we're like, okay, and we're listening to the story and there's not a value for the local church. So I think that's the first thing, value the local church, um, be under five-fold ministry. That's apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. And as you're under the local church, you're going to get familiar with the Word of God, the Bible. And that's one thing I want to I want to say. We've kind of been moving over the last seven years, not actually maybe four years, in the prophetic. And it's been a little different than where we come from. We come from a church that was very Word-based. It was a Word church. So most of the prophetic words were scriptures prophesied first and then elaborated on. So if you look at my prophetic word that really birthed this church, and you mentioned that last week, Matt, uh, the first thing that's said by Mike Heron, a bona fide prophet, is a scripture in the book of Psalm referring to King David and likening my ministry to that. So there's something that happens when the word of God is spoken. You know, I think people know instinctively if they've been around you know, if, if, if I get up on a Sunday or Anna gets up and we open the word of God, right, it, it elevates what we're saying. So we recognize that. We have authority because we use the word of God. It's not our words. It's the word of God. Now, we'll explain the word of God. We'll illustrate with our examples to, to give credence to what we're saying from our experience. But it's the word of God. So that's what I would say is be under authority, number one. And build relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I got really close to Dave Bell because I wanted to be a worship leader. He knew that. So I spent time with him. And there's something that happens, too, when you're around leaders. It's, it's imparted. Gifts are imparted. It flows through people. A lot of times people want to have gifts, but they think it's going to happen like when they're off in the woods by themselves. It's not. I don't. It can I guess it happened with Moses that way. He was talking to God in a burning bush, from a burning bush. Um, but it's usually when you're around a leader. 
it's transferred from one leader to another. And then learn the word of God. And I would encourage you, you know, be always reading the word of God. I was just looking in Acts. You remember the scripture? I don't know how many time this, times this has been prophesied. Um, David served God's purpose in his generation. And then he died. So that's been prophesied so many times because it's, it's such a powerful scripture. So that's what I would do if I were you. As you're reading the scriptures, when you see a scripture that stands out, that speaks life and love and blessing, underline it and tuck it away in your heart. And then you'll be praying for someone and you'll sense a prophetic word. And then you may feel to release that scripture and then elaborate on that. There's nothing wrong with the pictures and all that. I think that's great too. That's new for me. I'll just be honest with you. It's new for me, and I think it's great. But the word of God is great too. Yeah. And we are actually going to practice that in a couple of lessons, using the word to prophesy. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. Wow. <laughs> I just wanted you to hear from him because that was like... He's the pastor, right? Um, all right, so the last thing that I want to just um, just kind of drop in your minds concerning those who operate in the office of the prophet is, and especially for those who want to grow in that and feel like, like I might, I might want to grow in this area. I may, this may be the ministry that God is like stirring up and calling me to, and you want to kind of hang out there for the next several years. Number one, supernatural giftedness is proven over time. All right. So be faithful. You know, everything we just covered. Number two, your character. Character is so vital. Check your motives, right? Question even why you do the things that you do, why you say the things that you say. Because our motives, we're going to be led sometimes by our motives. And if we are led by motives that are selfish and, you know, sometimes, it, and I'll just tell you guys, this is a leadership discussion. As pastors, sometimes we have people who come with motives to build their own ministry and the entire focus turns on them because they want something and they're going to do everything that they can to get that. And it, it distracts what God has called us as a church on that. All right. That shouldn't be. If that is happening, that is an indicator that a motive is wrong. All right. So it's important that our motives line up with the vision of the church. And trust me, if God has called you to operate in a particular leadership role, your gift will make room for you because leaders will recognize it and they will want to help launch you into the gift and to the leadership position that you feel called to. Nothing brings a pastor more joy than to see somebody flourish and enter into the gift that God has called them to when it is done in the correct way, in an in a orderly way, not in an inordinate way. All right? So that is number one. Watch your character, guard your heart, guard your mind, keep your heart pure. There have been times, sometimes the prophetic, and this is another cautionary thing, sometimes the prophetic can build ego in people. If we stay in this position of of um Always, like, when you speak life to somebody, oftentimes people will respond a certain way that makes you feel good. And when you stay in that position, it can build your ego and it draws the it draws eyes to you. We want to make sure that our hearts and our, our, and our motives are lined up so that we're operating out of the right spirit. Because there have been times, and I know certain leaders, um, not personally, but I know of them who even have fallen sexually because of that um, ego boost that they got in the prophetic. All right? And that, my gosh, that can ruin a ministry like that. One wrong move and that can ruin a ministry. All right. So let's make sure that our motives are right. Number, number three, matured wisdom and serve with, um, under those in authority. All right. 
So last thing, um, being able to prophesy and flow does not mean that you are a prophet. However, steadfast prophetic usage will cause leaders to take note. Okay, last, that was it. Now I know that was a little bit uh, harder, but you know, I think that having discussions like that are important because it not only will help you all feel secure and confident, but it'll also, um, in us, right? But also um, help launch you into maturity as well. All right, um, last activation, it is 8.30, y'all. Are y'all good to, for just a really quick activation? This is gonna help you guys um, in that tool, in your tool belt um, prophetic. Okay, y'all, we'll, we'll, speed, we'll speed prophesy over each other. <clears throat> Under your seat, this time I won't forget to tell you to grab it. There's another paper. It has colors, and Chris. <clears throat> it has colors on it. Um, it's a little help sheet, not a cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> Just normal. Um, the thing that we're going to do, ah, hold on, I'm looking for my paper. This one's called What Do You See? So I want you to partner. Um, let's don't do your spouse. Find somebody in your row. You're just going to pair up by two. Where is my paper? Thank you. Um, you're going to pair up by two, and you guys are going to take turns, and we are going to use not judging someone's appearance, but we're gonna use something that's on them, maybe their earrings, maybe their shirt, maybe a logo, maybe the logo on your hat, maybe your shoes, something that they're wearing as a trigger to prophesy. So we're gonna ask God for a word to encourage your partner based on something, a color, a shape, a letter, a number, something that will prophetic, uh, uh, I mean, something that will trigger, it's getting late, something that will trigger a prophetic encouragement to your partner. Does that make sense? Everybody understand the assignment? And then after that, we have like a little thing. We'll send you home um, homework for this week, like we did last week. Um, so everybody pair up. I think it's more fun when you do somebody that you don't, you're not super buddies with. <laughs> you guys, how about you, Andrew, you and Jen, Athen. Athen. I was going to say you and Tony. Come up here, Athen. Could you and Mr. Musa, could you pair with Mr. Musa? Gracias. Can you come? Oh, those two.